Epiphone Casino has been a guitar on my radar, something that I've wanted to own and pick up, but it was something I was always kicking down the road. But since the Beatles Get Back documentary hit streaming services a few weeks ago, I decided to try and get my hands on one. So I went down to my local big box guitar store and picked up this import version for around $700. And I have to say, I've been absolutely blown away by this guitar. It's totally unique. The sound, the feel, it does its own thing. And I now understand why John, Paul, George, as well as countless other influential artists over the last 60 plus years have relied on the casino for their sound. Although it may look like another popular semi-hollow guitar from a similar company, it's not. They're completely different. This guitar truly does its own thing. It has its own character and its own sound. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at that. What is the casino sound? Now, Gibson acquired Epiphone in 1959, and they did so because at the time Epiphone was doing somewhat well in the bass market, and Gibson reportedly wanted to try and move into selling basses. And at that time, it didn't really work out for them, but what it did do is allow them to sell Gibson guitars under a cheaper name without using the Gibson nameplate itself, much like they do today. But what's much different than today was Epiphone at the time was made in the same factory in Kalamazoo, Michigan, that Gibson's were. They weren't made overseas and imported like this guitar was. Now to understand the casino, we need to talk about the Gibson version that this guitar is based off of, which is the ES-330. For all intents and purposes, the casino and the 330 are identical guitars. There's a few minor differences between them, but they're essentially the same design. Now the 330 was introduced in 1959 during the McCarty era of Gibson as a follow-up to the earlier thin line semi-hollow guitars like the ES-335. Now, although this looks like a 335, they're quite a bit different, and we'll get a little bit more into the differences here in just a minute. But essentially, the 330 and by proxy the Epiphone Casino are fully hollow, thin line guitars with a different pickup option than the 335. What's interesting is although Epiphone was considered the cheaper brand to Gibson, they weren't all that inexpensive for the time. When the casino debuted, it was known as the E230T. 230 meant it was retailing for $230 US. Compare that to the ES330, which was retailing for $330 US. And you can see there's quite a bit of a price difference, but it's not like it is today. <laughs> To me, the casino sound is instantly 
classic. I think the hollow construction really comes through in the guitar's tone. It's warm, it's resonant, it's woody, and the hollow construction paired with these Dog Ear P90s really does a unique thing. One of my favorite sounds on this guitar I've found is just the neck pickup with the volume and tone rolled all the way off and picking really close to the bridge back here. <laughs> It's super punchy and warm, but if you go to the bridge, you can get it to be bright and, and have a lot of attack. The other cool thing about it with it being completely hollow is when it's unplugged, it's incredibly loud. It's almost like a small acoustic. And the weight is something that I look for in a guitar. Typically, the lighter the guitar is, the better it resonates. And because this thing is fully hollow and it's really light, it rings like a bell. Now, at first glance, the Casino and the 335 may look somewhat similar, but if we take a closer look, you'll notice there's some pretty big differences in the construction, which lead to a difference in the sound. The Casino is completely hollow, like we just said. The 335 is a semi-hollow guitar, meaning there's a block of wood, block of maple, running all the way from the neck joint down to the heel of the guitar, and that's where the pickups and the bridge are mounted. The other big difference is where the neck joins the body. On the Casino, it's on the 16th fret, whereas on the 335, it's the 19th fret. Now, that's a big difference in how the guitar feels when you're actually holding it. The 335 feels much bigger. Now, obviously, the biggest difference other than the body construction is gonna be in the pickups. The Casino's loaded with Dog Ear P90s where the 335 has PAFs. And we can quickly hear the difference between the two pickups. <laughs> The other thing I've noticed about the Casino is how well it takes fuzz. Because of these P90s and because of the sort of bright, punchy nature of this bridge pickup, it holds up to a fuzz pedal really, really well. <laughs> musicians have used the Casino as their main guitar, but I would say none are more famous than the Beatles. Paul McCartney is actually quoted as saying if he had to choose one electric guitar, his original Casino from the 60s would be it. Now, my friend Keith Williams over at 5 Watt World just did a fantastic video on the guitars of Get Back where he goes into detail on the Beatles casinos and the differences between each one of them as well as how they acquired them. But for me, the way I was initially made aware of the casino was actually Gary Clark Jr. About 10 years ago when I discovered Gary's music, he was known for playing off-the-shelf Epiphone casinos. And up until a few years ago when he started playing Wide Skies, these were his main guitars. Now the story goes, and I did confirm this, that it was actually Gary's guitar player and friend of mine, Eric Zapata, who turned Gary on to the casino at a guitar shop years and years ago. He bought one that day, and for the better part of 10 years, it was his signature guitar. That's where I first learned about the casino and how it was different from a 335 or any of other Gibson semi-hollow lineup. Now, if you do a bit of research, you'll find countless examples of casinos used on all different genres of music from old school traditional blues to the uh, pop punk scene, uh, to the new wave movement, to the alternative movement and grunge movement. I mean, these things are ubiquitous. They're used across all different types of music. And I think it speaks to the versatility of the casino. Now, after owning this guitar for about four or five days now, I have to say I'm pretty impressed. 
for 700 bucks, this is one of the best guitars I've ever bought. I think Epiphone's doing a great job. The fit and finish is exactly where it needs to be. Uh, it does need a bit of a setup, but most guitars from the big box guitar store need setups off the wall. And since I've gotten it, I haven't put it down. I haven't even touched any of my other guitars for the better part of a week since I bought this one. Now, eventually I would like to own a vintage example of a casino, but the thing is right now, after the Get Back documentary, prices on them have gone through the roof. So for now, I'll stick with the Chinese import. Gibson, however, now is making for the first time since the 1960s an Epiphone in the States. There is a casino that you can get that's made in Nashville off the Gibson USA line. And I would be curious to try that out and compare it to the Chinese casino and see if there really is that much of a difference to justify the price difference. But overall, this thing is really great. Now I will be making some changes to it, uh, namely a setup. I'll be replacing the nut with a bone nut, replacing the tuners to give it a little bit more tuning stability. I'll probably take the pick guard off and more than likely we'll end up swapping these pickups to a slightly nicer set. To me, the perfect example of the casino sound, or at least what I'm looking for, for the casino sound is actually in Keith's video, the five watt world video, where my friend Tim Pierce is playing his original 62 casino, which looks almost identical to this one. The sound that he gets in that video is exactly what I want this guitar to sound like. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, because I'll probably be doing some videos on updating and changing and, uh, working on this guitar in the near future. So that is the Casino Sound. I really love this guitar. This has become one of my favorites in my entire collection. So if you have the opportunity to pick one up, I'd highly recommend it. These Chinese Epiphones, I think really do punch above their weight class for the price. Now, if you wanna watch more of these What Is The Sound videos, I have a whole playlist linked in the description box down below. There you can also find links to my video courses like the National Number System course or Fretboard Fundamentals. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and leave a comment. Do you own a casino? Have you ever played one? Are you looking for one? I'd love to know. My name is Rhett Shaw. Thank you so much for watching and remember there is no plan B.